Hi everyone, this is Father Mark. And in October, we always seem to lean toward our Blessed Lady. So here I am tonight in the vestibule of Holy Redeemer Church. And behind me is a shrine containing important objects from all of the former parishes that came together to form Holy Redeemer Parish. At the heart of the shrine is a statue of our Blessed Lady. And this came to us from our nuns who used to staff our school, the religious teachers, Filippini. We love them very much, and we really miss them. The statue is of the Virgin of Revelation, and we are only one of a few churches in the United States to have this statue. I think she's been wanting to come to Elwood City for a long time, because my devotion to the Virgin of Revelation began the day before my comprehensive exams in Rome. My classmate invited me to make a spiritual day, which I resisted. Finally, I gave in, and we made an hour-long trip to the shrine. I was so angry that I allowed him to take me away from the final minutes of study. However, when we arrived at the shrine and I took my first look at Our Lady, all of my anxiety went away. She was not holding a rosary or a scapular. In her hands instead, she was holding the Bible, the Word of God, which is divine revelation. And she identified herself as the Virgin of Revelation. That means the person who has set herself aside for the only purpose of receiving divine revelation. In my exam the next day, they were all about divine revelation. The exams were completed and I returned home. But my devotion to the Virgin of Revelation continued to grow and nobody in the United States ever knew what I was talking about when I spoke of her. In 1999, I was assigned parochial vicar to the Catholic community of Elwood City. And I had an image of the Virgin of Revelation in my office. And one day, Sister Mary Zuka noticed it and asked me why I had devotion to such a little-known apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary. After I told her my story, she smiled at me and very proudly said, We are her daughters. Shortly after I became pastor of Holy Redeemer, one of the sisters asked me if I would want a statue of the Virgin of Revelation for the church. And so we traded. I gave her a statue of Jesus that we were no longer using, and she gave us a statue of Mary that they were no longer using. So here's the story of the Virgin of Revelation. There was a man named Bruno Cornicola who was raised Catholic, but over time he grew to detest everything Catholic and actually began hating the church. Bruno's anger and resentment partially uh, was because he was so poor. And the other part of it was he associated with troublemakers. After receiving a very primitive education, he joined the military. And that seemed to sate his appetite for hating someone or something. As he grew older, Bruno decided to fight in the Spanish Civil War, only because he loved violence. And it was there that he met a Lutheran man who convinced Bruno that the Catholic Church was the cause of all the world's evil and she needed to be destroyed along with the Pope. And all of this fed Bruno's hatred for everything Catholic, and he even vowed one day to kill the Pope. At home, he was married, and Bruno was not a good husband. He threw out anything religious from his home, and he would beat his wife and his children. And one day he demanded that his wife leave the Catholic Church and join a Protestant church. But before leaving the church, she made one demand, that he would make a novena of nine Fridays in honor of the Sacred Heart. He did that, and she did leave the Catholic Church, though she regretted her actions. One day, while he was preparing an anti-Catholic speech and an anti-Mary speech, Bruno took his children 
to the field, and they played ball while he was writing his speech. It was only when the children cried out that they lost the ball that Bruno, with great irritation, left his notes and began helping his children search for the ball. While they were searching, he heard his son, John Franco, crying out, O bella donna, che bella donna, O beautiful lady, beautiful lady. And Bruno found his son kneeling and transfixed before a small grotto. And soon, all three of the children were kneeling there, saying the same words. And Bruno tried to pick them up and move them, but they were like stone. He couldn't move them. And in fear, he cried out, God help us. And as soon as he said those words, he could finally see what his children were seeing. He saw before him the most beautiful woman he had ever seen, and he felt inner joy at seeing the sight of this most gracious and lovely woman. Just like his children, he could not take his eyes away from her. This woman who was wearing a green mantle over a white dress with a rose sash tied around her waist. Her expression was one of deep sadness, and Bruno felt immediate shame over the sad look in her eyes. But still, he couldn't take his eyes off of her. He noticed that in her hands, she held the Bible, which she cradled close to her heart. Beneath her feet was a broken crucifix on top of a black cloth. Bruno could hardly believe what he was seeing, and he could not take his eyes off of her. She began to speak to him, and she said, I am she who is in the divine trinity. I am the virgin of revelation. You have been persecuting me. Now is the time to stop. Come and be a part of the holy family, which is the celestial court on earth. God's promise is unchangeable and will remain so. The first nine first Fridays in honor of the sacred heart which your faithful wife persuaded you to observe before you walked down a road of lies, has saved you. So now live the doctrine. Practice Christianity. Live the faith. The Hail Marys that you pray with faith and love are like old golden arrows that go straight to the heart of Jesus. Pray much and recite the rosary for the conversion of sinners and of unbelievers and for all Christians. Bruno was stunned at her words, and a transformation began to take place in his heart. Bruno's heart began to beat with love, rather than the hate and the anger that had been such a part of his life. Our Lady had more messages for him. She said, I promise this favor. With this soil of the grotto, I shall perform great miracles for the conversion of sinners and unbelievers. Science will deny God and will refuse his call. She also spoke of her assumption into heaven. She said, my body could not and did not decay. I was assumed into heaven by my son and the angels. She also instructed Bruno, you must go to the Holy Father, the Pope, the supreme pastor of Christianity, and personally tell him my message. Bring it to his attention. I shall tell you how to recognize the one who will accompany you to see the Pope. After this message, Our Lady disappeared, leaving a strong scent of roses. And Bruno was in shock at what he had seen and heard, and he would never be the same again. Upon returning home, his wife Yolanda could smell the scent of roses, and when she asked the children what had happened, they told her that they'd seen the most beautiful lady. She began crying, and she forgave her husband, and her husband Bruno begged her for her forgiveness. He was indeed a changed man. He and his family returned to the Catholic faith, but it would take two years before Bruno could fulfill Our Lady's request and pray the rosary in private with Pope Pius XII. After the rosary, 
Pope Pius asked if anyone wished to speak with him, and Bruno raised his hands and came forward and begged the Holy Father for forgiveness, which he immediately gave Bruno. Bruno continued receiving apparitions from the Virgin of Revelation, and on May 30th, 1947, the Virgin asked him to go find her beloved daughters, the religious teachers, Filippini, and to tell them that their mission is to be one of intense prayer for the conversion of non-believers and sinners. The Franciscan conventual friars were given custody of the grotto in July 1956, and they asked to construct a chapel at the site. Since then, a prayer to the Virgin of Revelation has been given an imprimatur by the Vicariate of Rome, and the devotion was so well recognized that during the Second Vatican Council, many priests and cardinals went to the grotto to pray. In 1987, on the 40th anniversary of the apparition, Cardinal Paletti, the Pope's official representative of the Diocese of Rome, came to the shrine to celebrate the Mass. However, a definitive judgment is still being investigated. But in 1997, St. Pope John Paul II approved renaming the shrine as Our Lady of the New Millennium at Three Fountains. In the month of October, as we are drawn to our Blessed Lady, we're invited to look at this particular apparition because she's inviting us to be like her, someone whose sole desire is to be set apart to hold divine revelation, the word of God in our heart. And so we pray. O most holy virgin of the revelation, you who are in the divine trinity, we ask you to turn your merciful and kind eyes toward us. O Mary, you are a powerful advocate before God and with the soil of the grotto, you obtain graces and miracles for the conversion of unbelievers and sinners. Obtain from your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, we beg you, the salvation of our soul, the health of our body, and the graces that we so need. Here we'll take a moment and make our petitions. Obtain for our Holy Church and her visible head, the Supreme Pontiff, the joy of seeing the conversion of her enemies, the spreading of the reign of Christ over all the earth, the true unity of all believers in Christ, and the peace of all nations, so that we can love and serve you in this life and thank you in heaven forever and ever. Amen. I'll see you again soon.